Okay, this is Mr. Tiberi at Eldon High School. We're going to take a look at how to perform a battery load test while the battery is in the vehicle. Okay, we're going to take a look at using the BAT40 battery load tester. Okay, so first things first, we're going to take a look at uh, how to hook it up. So I'm going to zoom in really quick. This is our battery. Okay, our car battery is 12.6 volts. We have six individual cells inside of this battery. There are 2.1 volts per cell. We have a positive post, which is indicated by the plus sign, and then we have a negative post, which is indicated by the negative symbol. Okay? Um, easy and simple enough. Okay? These posts are made out of lead. The posts are the round parts that stick out of the top of the battery. The connectors are these little guys right here. Okay? So this is a battery connector. This would be the negative connector. Okay? So we're going to go ahead pop that guy on. They should be tight, but for this demonstration it's not really that necessary. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at how to connect our machine. Okay. On the VAT40 you're going to have these two large leads. Okay, you have a red one for the positive terminal, a black one for the negative terminal. So, easy and simple enough, you take these two leads and you connect them directly to the corresponding terminals. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Easy and simple enough. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here at the VAT40 machine. I'll show you the machine in a little bit. It's got this green, goofy looking thing. Okay? This is our amp clamp. Okay? It's what's referred to as an inductive pickup. The way this works is as electricity travels through these wires, when that happens, it generates a small magnetic field. So as electrons move, it actually makes a magnetic field. Okay? This amp clamp, this inductive clamp, picks up on that magnetic field. As the wire and electrons inside of the wire travel through this hole right here, it's going to measure that magnetic field. And then the machine can dictate how much current from the battery is flowing to the machine. Okay? So for this test, you can clamp this on either the positive or the negative cable, okay, leading to the machine. Okay? Not on the battery, but leading to the machine. So you want to pick one of these two cables right here. All right, for this case, we're just going to go with the negative cable. And I'm going to use it so that the arrow points towards the machine. Because there is a goofy little arrow on there, if you haven't been able to try to bring it up there. There you go, little arrow. Right around there. Easy, simple. Okay. So the next thing we got to do is we got to find out what the cold cranking amp rating is on this battery. Okay, it's important that we do that because we have to divide that number in half. Okay, so typical locations for this is right here on a sticker on top of the battery, or it's located on the side or the front or the back of the battery. Okay, so in some cases you'll have to take the battery out in order to dictate what the cold cranking amps of the battery is. It's important that we get this number, otherwise we could have an inaccurate test. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in so we can take a look at the uh, cold cranking amps on the battery. So hopefully we can get a good view. All right. So right there, we can see it. Uh, if it comes into focus, let's see what I can do here to try to fix that. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. It's 650 CCAs. It's listed right there. Kind of difficult to see, but it's 650 cold cranking amps. We're going to take that number, we're going to divide that number in half. Okay, so this is some rudimentary math. So what's 650 divided by 2? Well, that's easy. Take a basic number, divide that. What's 600? It's 300. What's 50? It's 25. So what's 650 divided in half? 325. Okay? Easy, simple. Math we can do inside of our head. Okay? Nothing too complicated here. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the VAT40. So that's coming up. So now we're taking a look at the VAT40. I've been taking a look at this. We got a couple of different features on here. Now I'm trying to do the, my best to like position my body in such a way that I cancel out the reflections that are trying to cover these gauges. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about these uh, different things that we have on the VAT40. Right here we have a load increase. And what this does is it takes what's called a carbon pile. And a carbon pile is like a bunch of plates. And it's going to sandwich them together and it creates what's essentially a sort short circuit um, and it's going to cause excessive amounts of current to leave the battery and go through this machine and then go back to the battery. So 
that allows us to actually measure how well our battery is doing. The amount of current that's leaving the battery is going to be dictated by this gauge right here. And I notice there's two gauges. There's a low scale gauge, which is our blue one, that only goes from 0 to 100. And it's got a positive side and a negative side. Just just depends on which way the electricity is flowing. Okay, It can go either way, but that's dictated by the arrow, you know, which way you point the arrow on the amp clamp. Then down here in the bottom, we have a voltage gauge. And you'll notice I wrote down 9.6 volts and I made a little line here. Um, that's so we can use that as a quick reference because when we perform this test, I don't want to see this needle go below 9.6. If it does, that dictates whether or not the battery needs to be either recharged or replaced, depending on how far past 9.6 it goes. Now, we take a look at a couple features. We have this right here, which is a zero adjust. When everything's connected to the battery, much like ours is, if our needle scale on our current right here is skewed, it's away from zero, what we want to do is we want to use that uh, zero adjust. Again, I'm going to try to position my body here. So we want to use that zero adjust so I can take that needle and bring it right into zero. So I'm going to turn it to the left. I'm going to turn it to the direction that I want that needle to move until it zeroes out just right. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to come down here to my volt selector. I want to make sure that this knob is in the internal 18 volt section, INT 18V. Then I look at my field selector. You're not going to mess with this. Okay, Just leave it alone. So it's in the off position. It's got A and B, but it doesn't matter. Uh, this is used for alternators, so we're not going to mess with this at all. Then you have your test selector. Now this one may seem a little weird, but we want it on the starting position. Okay, And the reason we're doing that is because you'll notice that there's a red square and a green square. And what that represents is the red square right there dictates that we're going to use this red scale right here. Now I know it looks pink. Okay. And that's just due to fate. I mean, this is a really old machine. Then the green is going to represent this top scale right here. So we're going to actually look at both of these scales at the same time when we perform this test. So now that everything is connected, zero adjust is perfect. My load is in the off position, which it always should be. My volt selector is in internal 18 volts. Field selector is off. And my test selector is in the starting position. What I now am going to do is I'm going to take my cold cranking amps, 650, that's divided in half, and we figured that out, that's 325, and I'm going to load 325 amps of current onto that battery. And once I hit 325, whether it's 325 on this side or on this side, doesn't matter. Okay, as soon as I hit that 325 mark, boom, look down at this blue scale. You want to find out this, where this needle is at and it needs to be above 9.6 so we should be off to the right side if we're on the left side no good All right, so here we go we're going to go ahead we're going to pay attention to this top scale when we get to 325 we're going to look down here at our voltage scale and we don't have a load until that light turns on so we're going, 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 going right there about 320, 325 boom look at your voltage it's decreasing, 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 turn it off. On average, you cannot hold a load, okay, and you'll know by that light, you cannot keep a load on that battery for any longer than 15 seconds. And when we perform this test in the shop, you got seven seconds to do it, okay? We don't want to load it for, fifth, for the full 15, only seven seconds. Now that aside, what do we get for our readings? easy. As soon as we hit that 320-325 mark, okay, boom, we look down here and what you've noticed was that needle right there on the voltage side, it snuck past 9.6 and it started creeping towards 8 volts. It's no good. So in this reference, I would state that the battery has a low charge. So what you would do next is charge the battery with a low charge rate roughly about two amps and charge it for about four to five hours okay get the battery slowly brought up to charge and then retest if it pulls the same thing battery needs to be replaced okay so that's how to perform a battery load test with the battery in the vehicle okay 
Next, we'll take a look at a battery that's removed from the vehicle. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped out.